I'm very pleased to be sitting here with uh, someone who needs no introduction, but we'll do it anyways. <laughs> From Shira, the voice of Shira herself, Melinda Brick. Thank you, thank you. Hi, hi. It's a baby over here <laughs> who, who's more interested in his fingers and thumb than he's interested in anything. <laughs> ah. So, Good morning or afternoon, yeah. I don't even know what time it is. And you're on California time, so yeah. it's even more confusing I, I, I for you. I'm kind of like, you need a little bit of jet lag here. Hi. <laughs> okay. We've already got our first fan question. That's like. right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her a few questions, and then I'll bring the mic out and let everyone else ask questions as they, uh, as they feel free to. So be thinking of some good stuff for Melindy. And uh, so first things first. We were talking earlier today about how you were born in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's right. Yeah. How did you get from Charlotte to Hollywood? Oh gosh, it was it was a, a kind of a long journey. I think I moved away from Charlotte uh, when I was a little bitty girl. Don't remember too much about it. And then I moved to Texas, and I was in Texas for a long, long time. And then uh, was doing a show, I think, in uh, Las Vegas, and. Uh, uh, someone saw me there and an agent saw me there and said, come to Hollywood and said, well, I might as well. I think I was 24 and he said, you're getting old. <laughs> I said, okay. So I went to uh, Los Angeles and did some film and some television. And at that time, that's when all the uh, animation was going on, uh, kind of came really big. So they said, do you want to do animation? And I thought, well, yeah, it's fun. And it's, it was really up my alley because I was an actress the whole time before. And uh, so I started doing that and uh, doing commercials and voiceovers. And that's how it started. Still doing it today, which is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you were a little girl, did you have that, that vision? Did you want to be an actress? When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a singer and a nurse. <laughs> So, so I think I kind of, uh, at least with the Shira thing, uh, and and with the career of doing voiceovers, the singer. I thought to myself because I remember one time I went to this when I was doing a a, a musical in Houston, and uh, I was singing in it. But I, we all, the whole cast, went to a psychic, and said, can you hear me? Does this ring to you too? Is it ringing out there? No. Okay, we went to this psychic. And she told me, she said, well, it's interesting. You're gonna make, you're gonna make a name with your voice. And I went, what? I'm a singer? I don't think I'm that good. Uh, and sure enough, with the she thing, uh, the name was made with the voice and she has healing powers. And it seems to me with all the fans I've met throughout the years, it healed a lot of kids' lives and brought a lot of joy. So that's kind of healing. So I feel that in a, in a funny sort of way, all of that came true. So do you sing at all or? Yes, I do you sing, do? Okay. I do. But I, it, it, what, I never, I, I sang in musical comedies, but I never thought that it would be, you know, something that was going to be a big name for me or anything like that. No, I never thought that. I was just wondering, cause, uh, it seems Can like you a lot of him as well. Is this okay? I, I was just curious because it seems like a lot of right folks who are like this in the voiceover industry. Yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I was just asking because it seems like a lot of folks who were involved in the voiceover industry had some sort of ties to music or stand up comedy or something along oh, those lines. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, at least a, a lot of the people that I know, they either sang, I don't know that many who were stand up comedians, but yeah, definitely singers. Um, so, I think back to probably like the 1930s and pre Hayes Code stuff. That's and even before my time. <laughs> I know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. But, but I, I think of the strong... Gary, I think you have to talk right into that. Okay, there. yeah, sorry. I think of the strong female characters of that time. Yeah. And then somewhere in the 40s, it felt like women became more submissive in Hollywood. In the at 40s? Least in, in, well, probably 50s. 50s. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they became the, the, the wife or the trophy wife or whatever have yeah. you. But then the 80s sort of saw this resurgence. And, I mean, granted, there were women like Barbara Stanwyck and a actresses like that who were Mostly strong villains. throughout their whole career. <laughs> but, uh, but then all of a sudden the 80s roll around and you get to sort of push feminism forward with 
She-Ra. Mm-hmm. And what, did that feel like such a big thing at the time? No, absolutely not. Because I, I thought of She-Ra, first of all, yes, she was real, but she's a superhero. And I think deep down inside, every woman ever born, there's a superhero. I mean, the things that women have to do, police, you know? And uh, so I, I, I never thought, it of, uh, thought of it as being absolutely feminist. I just thought of her as being uh, a full, complete woman. I really did, and a superhero. And she was a fantasy character, but she's that superhero in everyone. Not just, not just g- women, in everyone. That superhero part of us that, that somehow, somewhere, sometimes comes out, and we're so glad it does. It's been great seeing the, the people who come up and talk to you today, because yeah. it's, it's been it's an wonderful. even mixture of, of genders. There's, oh, yeah, there's clearly always, no forever. one-sidedness to It always out. has been that way, too. I've gotten wonderful, wonderful letters from people of, of, uh, of, of both genders, all genders, frankly. And uh, it, it has made such a wonderful impact on their childhoods and, and everyday lives, even now. So I'm very grateful for having done it. Awesome. Well, who has some questions for her? All right, so throw your hands up. Uh, what we're going to try to do is just keep from, like, could you say this quote or could you do this shout out because she can do that at the table but for the panel let's save it for questions so uh we'll start no actually your hand was up first i'd rather do it here okay (laughs) (laughs) it's easier here because i'll be there i can hear can't hear myself too well and it's a little bit quieter and you can hear it better too. well if that's if that's the way that she wants to do it she's the boss so let's (laughs) let's let her do it so first of all i have to thank you talk right into the uh, yeah so first of all, I have to thank you for being the strong woman character that you were for me thank when I was you. a child. Um, you and Linda Carter kind of got me through my <laughs> my childhood. Yeah. Um, it's a t- childhood is a tough time. It is. It really and is. I ended up becoming a nurse. Oh, you so did. I did. Yes. Ah. So um, I wanted to ask you, how has Shira changed your life? Pardon me. How has Shira changed your life? Oh, that's a good one because, you know, I would, I don't know, but Sheila did change my life. I was going through a very, very difficult time when I did Sheila. And it took those scripts and having to do that and having to be that character to show me what strength I had. So is she really did mean a lot to me. And she kept me going through a very, very difficult time. I had no idea, however, that 35 years later, or 34 years later, she'd still be popular with everyone else. But maybe the, what I was going through carried through and gave everybody else, gave her that, that indefinable characteristic that some characters have that really cut through everything. Could be. Glad you're a nurse. <laughs> it's a great question. Who? Hello. Um, Hi. A lot of the voice actors that I hear or hear speak I'm oftentimes sorry, say that high. they would. I didn't hear you. I said a lot of the voice actors that I've seen speak often say that they were not aware that they were famous at the time that they were doing it. Oh, were you aware of how popular Shira was when you were playing the character, or did that come later on? Um, she, I, to me, interestingly enough, the fact that she's lasted 34 years is what makes her famous. She was very popular, yeah, but not, like, not with the depth that 34 years later she has. And uh, as far as being famous, uh, I considered it a job because I was doing television and film and a lot of other things as well. But as I mentioned in the first question, um, she had a very, very uh, positive and and deep effect on me because I was going through a tough time at that time too. So yeah. (laughs) Cool. So I have both a question and a request. Okay. (laughs) Um, The question is, 
because you voiced so many of the different characters on Shira, and in addition to Shira, one of my favorites was was Catra. Uh-huh. <laughs> I loved all the. I had crushes on villains as a kid. Catra, Maleficent, Eva Lynn. It was a thing. So my request after my question is if I can get That's a cat. That's hysterical. <laughs> so my request is going to be if I can get a Catra growl. Oh. But of all the voices you did, how much freedom did you have to create them? Were you given a lot of guidance or did you have free reign to create all of them? We had no guidance. <laughs> no guidance at all. Is said do it. Because at that time, doing, uh, doing cartoons, you, were, you had to do three voices. I mean, you had to be able to do three voices. And uh, with this one, but with she it was a little different because uh, Filmation at that time, Lou Scheimer, this was, this was a really new series. And when he, he, when he created it, everybody wanted him to change this, change that, change this. And he said, no, I want it this way. And usually when we did uh, uh, auditions, we'd go in, and back then it was a reel-to-reel thing. Uh, I don't even know if anybody, younger kids know what a reel-to-reel thing is, but uh, we would do, go to the, our agency, record our audition, and then they would send it over to the uh, producer, who was Lou Scheimer. This time, we sent in an audition, and then I was asked to go meet with the producer. And that was unusual. You Usually you just send them in, they hire you, and that's that. So I went, oh, this is different. So I went in and met Lou, and we talked, and he talked about how important this character was and how, what she was. So uh, I knew at that time it was something special. And what was, what was the first part of that question? How much freedom did you have oh, to yeah. create the so roles? All, I think all, Lou knew that I was a professional. And uh, so I think all he was really, really worried about was that main character, to make sure he got the right voice for that main character. So, uh, and I, other than that, I, wasn't, I, was, I was just hired to do She-Ra and then do all these other characters too when I got in there. So, so I just kind of made up things with that. Now, I read a very, very funny sci-fi article that someone wrote, 23 reasons or 32 reasons why she is the best thing ever created. <laughs> and one of them was talking about the series that Katra, what was he, uh, she was, uh, shoot, what did they say about Katra? Oh, it's kind of a cross between Eartha Kit and something else. And strangely enough, that's what I heard in my head, a little bit of Eartha Kit, which was really weird. Uh, but now let's see if I can think of any lines that she said. Do you know any lines? That, can you remember any lines that she said? So many. <laughs> oh, well, tell me one and I'll say it. Um, uh, what's a good one? She usually did a good, I've got you now, Shira, oh, okay. with the purr. Oh, yeah, let's go. I've got you now, Shira. <laughs> you just made my childhood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got you now. <laughs> All right, who's got another question? Hi. We'll move beyond the front row in just a minute, I promise. Hi. Okay. I love Shira. What was your favorite part about playing Shira's voice? Uh, playing Shira's playing Shira's voice. Oh, my favorite part was that she was strong, she was kind, and she never lost a battle, but she never really had to fight too hard. <laughs> that was my favorite part. And she was a nice lady. Yeah. Thank you for your question. All right, we'll move back here. Uh, yeah, I have a question. When you were voice acting, did you ever work with John Irwin, the voice of He-Man? Like, did, how did it work back oh, then? Oh, yeah. John and I still talk today. He's a wonderful person, and I try to get him to get out here and meet all you fans, but he's a very shy person. So, uh, but I've told him how much everybody loves him. He's a great guy. I love John. Okay. He, was, he was really my brother. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. 
Now, did you record ensemble for she or yes, was it individual? Yes, that was what was so exciting about it. We had to, uh, we, uh, today when we do uh, animation or cartoons, a lot of times we just go in and record and then somebody else records it, blah, 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 blah. But not this time. We were a whole ensemble. We'd go in, we'd uh, sit around a, a big table, come in in the morning and read the scripts we were going to do and get out all our giggles there <laughs> so that we wouldn't break up in the, in the booth. And then we would break for lunch, and then we'd come back, and all of us would record in the same booth together. So it was great fun. And we had a, 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 a tremendous uh, rapport that way. You know, you're, you weren't just talking to nobody. You had somebody you were reacting to. So it was great. So uh, did that work, though, getting all the giggles out? Because knowing Alan Oppenheimer... <laughs> It was tough, yeah. believe me. Uh, those guys, I'll tell you, John, John yeah. and, and uh, uh, George Desencio, who is no longer with us, and Alan, oh my gosh. They, I was just the foil, fall guy, you know. I was just, <laughs> just there, and, I, and I, 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 I don't think I laughed uh, and broke character too many times. I'm sure I did sometimes, though, because they're hysterical. Oh, yeah. They're just too funny, and I love them all. <laughs> Perfect. All right, who's next? Back here. I'll give you Hi, I too Hi. have a question and a request. Okay. My question is, how did you distinguish between the voice of Aurora and the voice of Shira? Okay. Um, for Adora, um, I thought of her as being the, uh, as I said, I was in, I did a lot of theater and, and uh, 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 when I was growing up, and I thought of her as kind of almost like a, 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 a Romeo and Juliet character, except not Juliet. She was just young and innocent, and she was she was she was just had a pure heart and was done. And she did what she was told, and she believed everything and did everything she was told until she found out. And so I just made her voice a little higher, basically. And then when she turned into Shira, it's kind of what I think about what happens. Uh, being a woman, I know what it feels like to go from adolescence into being a woman. There's something indefinable that happens, but something, something changes, and you become a woman. You know, in your heart and in your and in your head. Innocence may not be lost, but wisdom comes with the innocence of a pure heart, and that's the way I thought of it that way. And my request is. My daughter's in college and couldn't be here, so uh -huh. could she rest? say hi to my daughter, Megan? <laughs> Megan? Okay. All right. Hello, Megan. This is Sheila. Have a wonderful time in college. Live your life, live your soul, live your heart. From Sheila. Hi. Um, so I just want to thank you for a wonderful childhood as well. Growing up in the 80s, it was not so tough, but you really changed my life. And I too became a nurse, and a school nurse. So I went from teacher to nurse to school nurse. I'm so sorry, I couldn't hear the last part of that. So I also became a nurse. Oh, you did so too. I'm a, I'm a school nurse as well. So I oh. just, I have, my question to you is, what is the best advice you can give to all the little girls big girls anybody that um you know for a life let like a life, life advice what's the best thing you can offer to, to young kids today you know it's very that's a very deep sort of a responsibility to give to a person to say to people, except the only thing that I know is you have to hold on to something inside yourself while listening to everyone else. You have to know, try to keep that inside of you, the part that is deep inside, that knows the truth, knows your heart, and try to live through that you know, Shira had the sword of protection, and I always think of the sword of protection as whatever you hold on to in your heart, whether it's your religion, whether it's uh, uh, a wonderful 
sense of knowing who you are, whether it's a belief in life and a belief in love, belief in kindness, belief in strength. Hold on to that no matter what happens outside in the world. You're going to see many, 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 many things. But if you hold on to the inside part of yourself, and when you get away from the outside world, if you remember what that is, you can always be an observer and, uh, of life rather than just going with life as it happens. Uh, try to maintain your inside uh, serenity. That's what I would say. Okay. It's, not, uh, it, oh, it's, it's still working. All right, any other questions out there? Over here. Okay. Um, I just want to know if you ended up ever, when doing the voice acting, having some really surreal conversations with yourself by switching by voices. Having what? Having Did, is it too close? I couldn't hear it. Okay. Uh, did you ever have some weird conversations with yourself co oh. doing the voice acting? While recording it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it, <laughs> I didn't do it as often as Alan did, but I remember there were some times when I would have to be uh, Mermista, the crazy French Mermista, or, or uh, cast a spell and then go back to doing Adora and she and like that. And it, it was just, it was, sometimes, most of the time it was fun. Sometimes it was hard, and we had to say, no, we have to do one at a time. But most of the time, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> we have a, an, uh, another question. What do you think of the new Shiva? OK. I knew some smart person was going to ask me that. <laughs> and from the mouths of babes. Um, well. I've been asked that, and I, I, when it first came out, I don't know if, if you all know, there was a big backlash against the fans of the 80s series. And I kept listening to it and looking at it, and being in the business, I knew it was marketing. And I knew it was to get publicity for the new series. However, when I started hearing some of the things that were being said about fans of Shira, I got very upset. And I, on my Facebook page, I actually wrote something about it. And I said, I know I'm taking a chance here, but every fan, I'm, I'm really hurt and offended by what's been said, because every fan I have ever met from the Shira series has been absolutely wonderful. And, uh, Interestingly enough, the new marketing has done a lot of damage control. And they've tried to give honor to the series in some small way. So, and I, as far as the series goes itself, I thought, okay, I, ha I can't be, I, of course I love my series and I love this series, but I, I said, I have to be realistic about this. So I watched, I watched three episodes of it. First of all, I'm not a fan of anime, so that's that's the first thing. But uh, but you know you have to give give credit where credit is due, and I liked some parts of it, but other parts I wasn't quite fond of. So I watched about three, and then I didn't watch anymore. Um, but what I feel about it is, uh, it has great marketing and uh, a lot of money behind it, and it will stand on its own. If it's if it's a if it's a series that's loved, it'll stand on its own, and 34 years from now we'll see uh, if it stands on its own, you know. But I'm I'm I just wish that they had because it's not really the Shira that we knew. The Shira that we knew knew she was a superhero, really deep in her heart, and she didn't have all the uh, uh, the the questions about things. She was quite centered is what I was trying to tell the young people today, stay centered. You know, she was centered. Once she knew what was right, that was it. And it didn't take long for her to figure it out because she already was born with it. And I think we all are. We all know what's right. So anyway, that was, that was it. That's how I felt about it. So uh, I, I, I just wish they hadn't used the she name. But that's okay. <laughs> huh? 
She doesn't like it. Oh, oh, interesting, interesting. Okay. Can you do the I am Shiva? What, honey? Oh, how about this <clears throat> for everybody too? I am Adora, He-Man's twin sister and defender of the Crystal Castle. Fabulous secrets were revealed to me the day I held aloft my sword and said, "For the honor of Grayskull, I am Shira." <laughs> A little peanut butter in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Great questions. Uh, we've got time for two more, so I see you and I see you, and then we'll we'll close it out. Yeah, uh, I actually had a question and request. You already did my request. Oh, but, uh, okay. Yeah, my question is: uh, Netflix. They said they're going to continue the filmation series. Uh -huh. uh, have you been contacted about that at all to to re to reprise your role as Shira? Oh, no, no. I was actually, uh, when I heard about it from my agents, and they told me when, the first, when they were auditioning for it, they said, they're going to choose a young, young girl. They're not going to go. I said, that's fine. You know, I, I understand that. Uh, but uh, I did audition for Aunt Light Hope, and I didn't get it. <laughs> but I think the truth is, and my agent said so as well, they wanted it to be a completely new thing. And so, it, you know, and, and just like any of you who have ever worked for a company and the, uh, uh, the CEO has changed or the, or the uh, managing director has changed, they get a whole new team in, out with the old, you know? And I think that's basically what happened, because it's a business, you know? Yeah. I'm glad I put him to sleep. I put the baby to sleep. <laughs> Hello. Um, of course, a few years ago, we lost Lou Scheimer. So I was wondering if you have any particular memories of working with him in the recording. I was wondering if you have any memories of Lou Scheimer that you would like to share with us. Lou Scheimer was one of the great producers I have ever known. He was a really loving family man, and he knew how to put a group of people together. Uh, he, he treated us all like family, and I think he thought of his audience as his family and friends. He was a great man, just terrific, really good guy. All right, so it sounds like Shira is probably the most personal to you, uh, at least very, throughout the years, very. but you've had such a vast career on camera and in animation, what else to you really stands out? I mean, you got to work with Peter Sellers. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I was just watching that yeah. on Turner Classic the other oh, night, my goodness, and, uh, yeah. and then there you were. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was Shirley MacLaine too. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, I played her best friend, but back in the, those days, that uh, there was a very long movie in the first place. But all my scene, well, there were two scenes left in, but most of them were cut out with her because they didn't need them. Yeah, but it was great. I've worked with a lot of great people. But Shira, to, to be a, a cartoon has been just amazing. You know, you can do a lot of films, you can do a lot of television shows, and uh, but to have have done Shira is just it's just remarkable. But I think you asked me for whatever else I like to do. Honestly, the truth is, I've done two other things in my life that meant the most to me. One was a public service spot for suicide prevention, and the other one was an after-school special about an alcoholic mother. And uh, it, was, it was called Francesca Baby. And at that time, it was to be nominated for a daytime Emmy, but uh, during that, that Emmy year, uh, the Academy split, so there were no awards given. <laughs> But uh, how I found out from someone else, uh, oh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, that that particular show is still played in rehab centers, which I thought, oh my God. You know, it's the things that touch people's hearts and change their lives that meant the most to me. And those are the three things, Shira, that and that. It's fantastic. Yeah. 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for your thank time. You so thank much. you for being here. Thank you all. Thank, thank you all. Thank you so very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. I am Invader Zim, and I traffic in doom. And so, if you do not subscribe to this channel, you will have doom that befalls you by me, Invader Zim.